And uh, how, those that are on teams, do you agree they'll wind up being a blessing, but they'll be just as blessed or more blessed, right, than being a blessing. Turn with me, please, in the scriptures this evening to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and then perhaps we'll go to Ephesians chapter 3 after that. 1 Corinthians 2, Ephesians 3, and please believe with me for utterance, for the anointing, hmm? and uh, answers, answers. Let's join in, in prayer and faith right now. Father, we join together. The believers here in Sarasota, believers in Branson, those watching with us across the states, in other countries, asking you for utterance, for the anointing. It's not in me of myself, nor any man or woman, but you're in us, and it's in you. Help us, Lord, to yield to your spirit. And speak as the oracles of God. And give all of us ears to hear it and eyes to see it. And a heart and mind to discern it and receive it. And thank you for working in us to will and to do it. To do all of your good pleasure. Grant us, Lord, answers. Things that you've already said to us and shown us. That we didn't do. Forgive us and remind us again, please. And things we've not yet seen and understood, reveal to us, show us. And we'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. And we purpose not to be forgetful hearers, nor hearers only, but by your grace, doers of your precious word. And when we do, we know we will be blessed because you always watch over your word and perform it in the lives of those who do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody say, I'm a doer. 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 Of the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 2, did you find it? Now, uh, seemed like it's been a month ago, but a few weeks ago, we, uh, we ministered on healing and the anointing, and I thought maybe it'd be uh, one time. And uh, as I have thought wrong before about that, realize, no, no, there's, there's to be more. Uh, I don't have many uh, one and two message series. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, we, are, we have limitations because of our time and our flesh. Um, you know, when people get tired, basically they've had enough. And you can keep going, but it's not going to be good. And it's not going to be effective. And there, there are times when it's not necessarily that that's all the Lord wanted to say and do. But that's all that folks are a mind to receive. Right then. And uh, I'm talking about you and me. So uh, uh, thank God for churches where we can come back next week. Amen. Right? And just, just uh, pick up. Because I, you know, for decades now, I've traveled to other places and I'm there for one night or two or three. Well, you can't cover everything. Right? About that, obviously. And so the Lord will have you just focus on some specific things. But uh, thank God, that's one of the benefits of a church where we're not planning on closing up next week or next month or next year, right? I mean, we just plan on just, right? The Lord tears is coming and sustains us. Just keep on going. And if we want to do a 105 part series, we can. Right? 
And if the Lord was in it, do you think you'd be a lot better off getting the whole 105 parts than just two? If it took you a year or two. Anyway, did you find 1 Corinthians, the second chapter? Verse 1. The Spirit of God, through Paul, he said, I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. This is indicating that he wasn't depending on himself. That's the point he keeps bringing out. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. How many like the sound of that? Demonstration of the Spirit. That's not information. (laughs) Demonstration is not information. Hmm? He's talking about manifestation of the power of God. Demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Now Paul was an educated man. Grew up, as he said, at the feet of Gamaliel, who was the, one of the most highly respected uh, scripture scholars, theologians, you could say, of the time. I guess people came from, from far away to be trained under him in the, the law. And uh, Paul was obviously uh, very intelligent, and he was a a good speaker. You see, one of the places that they preached, the the heathen idol-worshiping folks uh, called him uh, one of the gods who was a speaker. (laughs) And, And he told them, don't you worship us, we're men like you are. But what he said he has learned, and if you look at Philippians, he He says, everything that I had that I knew, I counted garbage. (laughs) When he got saved, hallelujah, he realized there was a lot more to it than what he could gather between his ears. Hmm? And he got the revelation that he could not do what needed to be done. He could not produce it with his intellect nor with his speaking. He had to have the power of God, hallelujah, manifested for the will of God to be done. And no man can do it. No man can do it. No woman can do it. And that's why he describes, you know, what does it mean he came with fear and trembling? Well, he's realizing I can't do this, right? I cannot do this, but God can do it. And he said, uh, I didn't try to convince you through my knowledge and understanding and through my oratory. Because, verse 5, he he didn't want their faith to stand in his wisdom, in what he knew or in the wisdom of any man. But that your faith should stand in what? In the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, it wasn't just a bunch of talk, but you, but you saw a demonstration of the Spirit That's right. and power. And he said, and I, I didn't want your faith to be in what I knew. I wanted your faith to be in the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, faith, faith in, the power in the power of God. Of God. Not, not just power, not just any power. The power of God. Faith in the power of God. So we continued beyond the one session into another talking about this. Faith in the power of God. If you weren't with us, you can get the previous messages. 
download them or, or go pick them up if you want to get caught up with us. But I'm going to believe there's much more to understand and be stirred up about faith and the power of God. Yeah. Are you interested? Yeah. We just got through praying. We're believing, right? Yes. Huh? Yes. How many in here would raise a hand and say, I believe in the power of God? Do you? Yes. If God is real, yes. you got to believe in his power. Yes. I mean, if he didn't have any power, he wouldn't be God. That's right. Amen. He, he's all powerful. Is he the creator of the heavens and the earth? Yes. What kind of power does it, create, does it take to create all the stars yes. in the universe? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All the power. And the planets, yes. the, the forces mm-hmm. of their, their gravitational pulls and their rotations and a star, <laughs> you talk about power. Mm-hmm. The, the explosions uh, of of the, the, the gases and then the, the, the huge forces of gravity pulling them back in to keep them from just <laughs> exploding. Yes. Mm-hmm. You talk about power. Amen. Somebody say power. That's power. power. Now there are some people that think they're smarter than us that tell us there is no God that all this just happened by itself. That's not science. That's a belief. Amen. That's right. Mm-hmm. It's a theory. It's a belief. Amen. Now, I don't care who they are, how many degrees they have, nobody can prove to you when, where, and what happened. That's right. When all this began, mm-hmm. and, how it's, and people believe it just kind of it just sprang into existence by itself. <laughs> That's not science. That's a belief. Hmm? Amen. <laughs> People talk about, you know, evolution versus intelligent design and, and all of these things. Let me give you a, a for instance. Okay. <laughs> People say, well, given billions of years or more and enough, you know, how, we, we live on what scientists call the Goldilocks planet. <laughs> we're not too hot. We're not too cold. If we were a little bit closer to the sun, there'd be no life. If we were a little bit further from the sun, there'd be no light. I mean, conditions had to be perfect yeah, right. for us to be here. They would also agree, even in their uh, evolutionary theories, that conditions had to be perfect for us to spring from the goo to the zoo to you. (laughs) They believe that you used to be goo. Single cell organism floating in the water. That, that's not science. I know people try to pass it off as science. And what's sad is that these theories are taught for fact in our schools and universities. They're unfounded. They're unproven. They're not science. All true science agrees with God. Period. It has to. If it's reality, it has to agree with Him. And it does. But uh, it, there was a big bang. Well, maybe there was when God said, let there be. Yeah. <laughs> Something happened. But uh, all this just happened perfectly. Perfect atmosphere. Perfect distance. Perfect, 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 perfect. Well, you can go out to the salvage yard where there's scrap steel and scrap aluminum and scrap, all the components are there. And you can set off huge amounts of C4. Vast amounts of C4. And you can do it a hundred billion times. You can do it quadrillion times. There will never, when the dust clears, be a new Lexus sitting there. (laughs) Never. Never. Perfection does not come out of chaos. It does it never has. It never will. When you see a perfect design, somebody designed it. 
Somebody built it. Well, maybe it was a greater intelligence. Maybe it was somebody outside this planet. It was. It was. God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come on, yeah. Amen. <laughs> no charge for that. That's just all extra. But if you, if you believe in God and that he is who the Bible says he is, you have to believe in his power. Right? He has power. And uh, Paul said, I didn't want your faith to be in the wisdom of men. And we live in, you know, in a, in a day and age where people put all of their faith in the wisdom of men. And become, be, believe they have become so wise and so learned that they no longer need the crutch of religion. It's, it's poor, simple folks like us need the crutch of religion. I'm so glad I'm not confused like that. The Bible said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And people that reject God are fools. I don't care how many degrees they got. You can be a highly educated fool. <laughs> Yeah, let me just stop on this. You know, being super intelligent will not assure you a good life at all. You, you can be brilliant and destroy every one of your relationships. Hmm? Being smart does not make, make you a good person and it won't give you a good life. Now, there's no premium to being dumb. I'm not saying that. <laughs> But a good heart is much more important than a smart head. Come on, are you listening to me? A good heart is much more important than a smart head. And the scripture said, trust the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. Thank you, Lord. Uh, go with me for time's sake. We won't go to Ephesians right now. But go with me, please, to the book of uh, Mark, the last chapter, the 16th chapter. You said you're believing with me, right? Man, there's some wonderful things here tonight for us to get into. Absolutely wonderful. You know that most people don't know spiritual when they see it. I'm serious. Most folks don't. In my few years of walking with the Lord, I see that clearer and clearer. Spiritual God things can be right in front of folks and them not even see it, not even know it, not even acknowledge it. But that's one reason we just got through praying, asking for discernment, right? And if you're willing and your heart's open, you can see it. But don't wait for a booming voice out of the sky or a lightning strike or an angel choir to manifest. Hmm? Is this the Lord's place? Are we his people? Or are we in his presence? I'm telling you, you can hear from him, straight from him, right now, right here. And answers come. Maybe some things that had bothered you all your life, just get them fixed right here tonight. Just get them solved. Is there any problem the power of God can't fix? No. Huh? No. No. Is there anything too hard for the Lord, the no, scripture no, says? No, Is there anything? No. Anything? No. Let's say you are so far in debt and so messed up financially that nobody has any. Everybody that sees your stuff just shakes their head and goes, <laughs> and you're, you're in trouble. Is it possible in a very short amount of time for you to be completely out of debt and in better shape than you've ever been. Is it possible? Is it possible? Is it possible? Could the power of God do that in your life? It can. Let's say you have a, a, a so-called terminal disease and you've been through every treatment and nothing can help you and, 
and, and everything points that you have to die young, you have to, your life has to be cut short. Is it possible for God to touch your body? If he has to recreate glands and organs in you, is it possible? He's done it before many times. Is it possible that even though it is utterly impossible in the natural with God, all things are possible? Why? Because of his power, his ability, and all things are possible to him that believes. There is nothing that's too hard for the power of God. Nothing. And you just, I heard you say a while ago, you had faith yes. in this power. Yes. Amen. Not just in the theology of Christianity. Mm-hmm. Right. Hmm? Mm-hmm. You have faith in the power, power of God. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? Yes. Faith, say, somebody said out loud, I have faith. I have faith. In the power, in the power. power of God. That was another way of describing demonstration of the spirit and power. Now in Mark 16, are you there? What we call the Great Commission, verse 15, Jesus told the disciples, and we're his disciples too. He said, you go into all the world and preach the good news about the good things. Right? (laughs) Gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. You know what that is? A manifestation of the power of God is how you get born again. Anybody in here born again? I want to know you, you've been born again. Then you have personally experienced the power of God in manifestation. Hmm? Yes or no? Yes. You can't be born again without the power of God. You were born again. Which is far greater than a miracle in your body. So why would you say that? Because your inner man, your spirit was not healed. It was recreated. Healing is repair in this existing structure. Our restoration, our renewal, and thank God for it. But you've already received a greater miracle than any physical healing. That's right. Thank you, Lord. You've been born again. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Not on the outside, but on the inside. Come on, somebody say, I've been born again. I've been born again. How were you born again? It was by the power of God. It was by the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead Mm -hmm. dwells in you. you, You're no stranger to the power of God. You have experienced the power of God in the new birth. And because of that, you already know what to do and how to do it to have additional manifestations of the power of God. You do the same thing you did when you got born again. You just do it in other areas. Y'all are kind of quiet. You want me to keep going? Say it again. I want to hear you say it. I have faith. I I believe In the power of God. God. He that believes and is baptized. How many things? Two things. Not one thing. Two things. Believe and is baptized. Baptism is an act because of what you believe. Hmm? It's not the physical act of being baptized in water that saves you. But if you don't believe it enough to be baptized, (laughs) hmm? if you don't believe it enough to stand up in front of people and let them know you identify with Christ, do you believe it? (laughs) 
and we will soon hook up our baptistry <laughs> and make available for other folks that want to get baptized, right? <laughs> but we, we got one paid for sitting right back here. We just got to install it. But uh, not just one thing, he that believes and is baptized. Not the physical act. I'm quoting Peter now. Yeah. Not, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh is how Peter said it. It's not just, I mean, you can uh, go into the baptistry a dry center and come out a, a wet center. <laughs> That's right. If you don't believe something. Is that right? It, it's, it's what you believe. But you got to believe it enough to act on it. Yeah. Hmm? Right. You know, you talk about marriage. There's all, all kind of folks living together now. And uh, they, they say, well, you know, God knows us and he sees us and we're married in the eyes of God. Said who? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Said who? <laughs> if you don't have enough love and commitment to stand before the Lord and your families, come on, are you listening? Yeah. And make commitments to each other, I question that it's there. Hmm? And all you got to do is watch and see what happens to people. Yeah. Right? Why don't they want to get married? Yeah. What's the hold up? The commitment is not there. Come on, are you all with me? Yeah. It's not there. That's the problem. Because when it's there, you have no problem. Yeah. Standing up before the Lord. Yeah. Standing up in front of other people. Yeah. Which is what water baptism is about. Hmm? Making a public confession of your faith. Why? Because you believe it enough, you don't care who sees it or knows it. Right? And so that you, everybody can see, boy, faith's really there. Right? Why? Because of what they're doing. <laughs> Did I rub somebody the wrong way on that? <laughs> How many think children coming into the world should have a mama and a daddy that's committed to each other and committed to them. And they have a name. Come on, are you listening? And they have a family. Don't you buy into this modernism and people, you know, misusing scriptures and throwing them around? No, marriage is a covenant. It's important. It's holy. Hmm? That bond and that commitment between the man and woman, that's the foundation of the whole family. Yeah. Right? Yes. Very precious. Very important. Uh, he said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. Somebody say power. power. That's power. Manifestation of power when you got saved. He that believes not shall be damned. These signs will follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils. Somebody say power. power. They'll speak with new tongues. Power. They'll take up serpents. Power. If they drink any deadly thing, it'll not hurt them. Power. power. That's the power of God. If you eat or drink something deadly and it doesn't even hurt you, had to be some power of God doing something for you. You remember Paul that time, he shook, that snake bit him and he just shook it off in the fire and felt no harm. That's, a man, that's, a, that's an example of this right here. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Power. Somebody say power. 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 We're talking about the power of God. Yeah. I can't do that. You can't do that. But the power of God does it every day of the week for those that believe. Thank you. Verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoken to him, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Where he is right now. And they went forth and did what he told them to do. Right. Preached, yep. proclaimed the good news about the good things That's right. everywhere. Uh -huh. And the Lord working with. Now, them is not in the original text. Right. It's not there. If you look it up in the concordance, it'll, the number will say 9999, yeah. which means ain't no word for it. Word. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord working with and confirming the word. With signs following, amen. What is a sign? A sign is a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. A sign is a manifestation of power. The Lord's not just working 
with special people that he likes. <laughs> hmm? You know who you know what he's working with? He's working with what came out of his mouth. He's confirming not you, not me, not this denomination or that group. He's confirming what he said. He's working with his word. He's confirming his word with manifestations of power. You believe it, saints? They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with and confirming the word with signs following. Anybody like that? Signs following. Signs following. Signs following. Hallelujah. Somebody say signs following. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Go with me to Acts 14, please. Acts 14. There is this idea that just continues through the church generation after generation about how we can get God to move. Hmm? And different ones get excited at different times about how we can get God to move. And uh, you'll hear people talking about prayer. And we're going to talk more about prayer in just a minute. But a lot of times what they're calling prayer is actually just begging. Begging God to move. And you won't find any scriptures that tells you to beg God to demonstrate his power. No. Not a one. And that being the case, why is so much emphasis placed on that? How can we get God to move? If we could just get God to moving in our generation. If we could just get God to moving. God is moving. <laughs> he's moving a lot more than a lot of people think he is. But he's willing to move a lot more than that. Hmm? And it's not some vast great mystery that we need to figure out how to get God to move. When I say well, that, how to get God to manifest his power. Oh, God, we want you to manifest his power. I know uh, one reason I know what I'm telling you is because he had to correct me on this. Back uh, 35 years ago, uh, as we were just beginning to get into the ministry, I knew God was dealing with me. I got enough word in me to realize that God was, he was trying to communicate something to me. The difficulty was not his, but in me understanding and getting it. And uh, Phyllis and I had just married, and I had one of the better jobs in our little country community. And uh, I had a, a new, uh, not a new, but a hyped up hot rod and a good pickup <laughs> truck and a good dog that caught my frisbee yeah. for a country boy. <laughs> Pretty wife, come on out listening to me. Good job. Yeah. Hmm? Looking good. <laughs> and, uh, and yet, as I fed on the word, I began to become increasingly discontent. Thank God. Amen. Elsewise, I'd still be there with my pickup. <laughs> and we would know each other. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. I, uh, Became increasingly, I got to the point where I didn't want to go to work. I didn't want to, and yet I didn't want to do nothing. I, I'm thinking, I got a good job. What's wrong with you? And, and you got all this. And yet what was going on is the Lord had a plan for our life. And I need to begin to get it. And I, I didn't have a clue. I, it was the furthest thing from my mind to be a preacher. That had not even entered in. 
No. <laughs> and yet, as I fed on the word, I'd been born again as a boy, but my spirit had not been fed on real faith food. You know, not everything that people preach will feed your spirit. Amen. The Bible said, nourished up in the words of faith. Now that doesn't mean that every message is about faith, but it comes from faith and in faith and it ministers faith. Mm -hmm. right. You can hear preaching for 40 years and never grow at all. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's true. Right. Depends on what you hear. Amen. What you hear. So just going to church, just hearing preaching is not the be all end all, not to fix all. Well, I begin to get dissatisfied. And, and so I begin to seek the Lord. Thank God he helped me to do the right thing. What do you do when you're dissatisfied and something's not right? Pray more. Seek him more. Spend more time with him. Come on, y'all listening. Fast. Pray. Seek him. Find out what's going on. And so there'd be times midnight, one o'clock, I'd be out in the woods. We lived on, we're out in the country. A lot of, a lot of woods, undeveloped land. And I'd be out there in the middle of the uh, the country looking up in the night sky going, God, what? What is it? What do you want? Do you want me to do something? <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, I had no idea what he wanted me to do. I mean, it makes me want to cry right now. Glory to God. How many believe his plan's always so much better than anything you could have imagined? And if you'll just follow him, he'll unveil it to you at the right place and right time and just, just keep increasing it more and more. And I, I must have asked him that 500 times. God, what do you want? Speak to me. Speak to me. Tell me what you want. <laughs> Tell, what, what, what is it? Show me what you want to do. I'm, and, and without realizing it, I'm wanting him to write it in the sky. I'm wanting, I'm wanting to hear an audible voice. I'm, huh? I know why you're laughing, because you've been there. And, uh, and uh, this went on for months. Finally, one evening, late at night again, out of bed, couldn't sleep. And I'm in our 1969 Marriott mobile home with the uh, red shag carpet and the genuine imitation black leather sofa. I'm kneeling on. That's another word for plastic. And I'm kneeling on this red shag carpet and this little plastic couch. And for the nth time going, God, speak to me. Talk to me. What, what is it? And he did speak to me. It wasn't an audible voice, but it was very distinct down inside me. Thank God I finally got quiet enough inside that he could communicate to me. How many know we live in a noisy world? A noisy, and there's so many voices, and they all are saying something. And the Bible said, be still and know that I am God. And you know, uh, uh, the prophet found this out. There was a strong, mighty wind. It said God wasn't in that. There was an earthquake. God wasn't in that. But then there was a still, small voice. And that was the Lord. And uh, this is what he said to me. Now, this was my big answer. Prepare yourself. Brace yourself. <laughs> but it really, it, really, it really was. It was the thing that, that kept me, this, it caused me to stop floundering and get focused. And take the steps that were necessary to come into the next part. He said, Keith, son, I've said many things to you in my word. Find out what I've already said to you. And if I want to say something else to you, I will. And so I got up. I sat down on the couch. And reached over on the table and got my Bible that I had been ignoring. 
And I realize God is speaking through every one of these pages. Is that right? You want God to speak to you? Hmm? Open your Bible and start reading. He's talking. Hmm? And the reason I go into all that is because this is how it works with the power of God. People are doing that. Please, God. Manifest your power. Please, God. He's already said something about this. And if you ignore him and keep begging, you won't get results. What did he say? Hmm? I'll tell you what. Hold your place in Acts. Go to John 14. And let me remind you specifically of what he has said about the manifestation of his power and spirit. John 14. Are you there? John 14, he's talking about in verse 16, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the spirit of truth. And down in verse 21, he said this, he that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me and he that loves me shall be loved by my father and I will love him and will what? And will what? manifest myself to him. What does that mean? I will manifest myself to him. This is the same thing we've been talking about. Demonstration of the spirit and of power. This is not information. This is not enlightening just your intellect. This is God revealing and making himself known And manifesting his presence and power to you. He didn't say beg me. What did he say? This is too simple for most people. (laughs) What did he say? Let me give you the Keith Moore paraphrase. Do what I say. Do what I tell you to do. And I'll manifest myself to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, friend, this is shouting ground. I said, this is shouting ground. You can quit begging. I didn't say quit praying. I said, quit begging. And quit going through all the gyrations that people go through, trying to get God to move, trying to get God to move. It is just this simple. Do what he told you to do. And when you do what he told you to do, mm-hmm. he said, mm-hmm. I'm going to manifest myself to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you do what he told you to do uh-huh. about your finances. That's right. Hmm? Yes. See, some folks, he told them to tithe. And they won't. And yet they've been begging him for a financial miracle for years and years, decades. But they won't do what he told them to do. Well, it's quiet in here now. Hmm? But if you do what he told you, that's just one of the things he told us to do. But if you do what he told you to do, did he tell you he would manifest? If you do what he told you to do about your finances, do you suppose he would manifest himself to you in your finances? If you do what he tells you to do about your healing, Hmm? Will he manifest himself to you in your body, in your physical realm? But you got to do what uh, he told you to do. It can be simple as can be. I know back uh, in the beginning days of my ministry, I was preaching a lot, sometimes 20, 25 times a week. I'm young, I'm strong, I'm going after it. But I got to a place where my voice was cracking. And I'd lose it often. Not only am I, am I yelling and preaching, but I'm praying loud. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just pushing my voice just crazy. And of course, you know, not acknowledging it. And you know one of the things the Lord told me to do? If, you, if you're not getting results, it's time to seek him earnestly. 
in order to hear from him. That's right. Because if you'll do what he told you to do, what comes next? Manifestation of power yeah. in your situation. Yeah. You know what he told me to do? Yeah. I like to sleep, not naked, <laughs> but I like to sleep without a t-shirt on, with the ceiling fan on. I have been a little hot natured in the past, and that's how I liked to sleep. <laughs> and that's one of the first things the Lord told me. Put on a t-shirt and turn the fan off. <laughs> would you believe the Lord would tell you something like that? He told me that. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't want to do it. Because <laughs> that's how I always sleep, and that's how I like to sleep. And I'm not proud of it, but I didn't change it the next day. And I kept having problems. Finally, thank the Lord, I said, you know, I need to do what the Lord told me to do. I turned off the fan. I put on a T-shirt. And immediately my voice got better. Isn't that something? Something as simple as that. Immediately. I, I remember a fellow telling one time he was a missionary in a um, country down south of the equator in the jungle. And he's preaching night and day and he's just sweating profusely. And, and he, he got so weak, he couldn't function. And he's praying and asking God, begging God for healing, begging God for healing. And, and he got to where he's so weak, only thing he could do, he'd get up in time to preach out of the bed and go. And as soon as he got through, he'd go right back to the bed and barely have enough strength. And he's getting to where he can't do that. And the Lord, he said the Lord spoke to him and said, put a little extra salt on your food. He had depleted himself. Put a little extra salt on your food. And he said he did that immediately, but got stronger. But do you know, again and again, when the Lord speaks to you, it's not a booming voice out of heaven. It comes from the inside of you. Is he inside you? Is he in you? And because he's in you 24-7, it's not going to be a surprise. I mean, you're already familiar with his presence, so much so that you can take it for granted and not pay attention. And it can come up out of your spirit and just come to your mind, not in a loud, shaking, audible voice thing. And you can ignore it and just push it aside. But if he's told you something to do, and you keep begging him to manifest a miracle. You are going to be frustrated. Because you're going to go month after month. And year after year. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. God why won't you help me? That ain't the question. Why won't you listen? Why won't you do what he told you to do? The key. To manifesting miracles of God. Is so simple a, a three year old could get it. It's what Jesus' mother said at the wedding feast of Canaan. Anybody remember that? It's what, it's what she told him. What did she tell him? The, the Bible said this was the beginning of miracles in Jesus' ministry, and he manifested his glory. How did it happen? Come on, somebody help me. How did it happen? They did what he said to do, and the power of God. Manifested. This is the answer. I said, This is the answer. Go on with me over there while we're talking about it. John. You're in John. You're in the in the neighborhood. Anybody know where it is? John, this is the beginning. Of miracles. Hallelujah. Second chapter. John chapter 2. Verse 1. The third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine. The mother of Jesus said to him. They have no wine. They've run out. And Jesus said woman. What have I to do with you? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatsoever he says to you, 
do. Or it was added by the translators. But that's how we talk, do it. Now, where, where's the beginning of miracles? In his ministry it is. But we know what happened. We we're familiar with it. Where did this miracle start? Hmm? At this point, no miracle is imminent that we can detect. The power of God. I mean, they're having a wedding like many people have had many, many times before. There's nothing different going on. And yet, when she turns and tells them, whatever he says to you, do it. This creates an atmosphere of expectation. Then they're looking for him to say something about this. Right? They're looking to hear from him. And he heard from the Father. He by his own words. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. I do what I see the Father do. I say what I hear him say. The beginning of the miracle was when faith came. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the anointed word of God. You cannot have faith in God until you hear from God. But that's not the end. That's why I still got you holding in Acts 14. <laughs> faith can be present and there be no manifestation of power. Real faith in God can be present and there be no demonstration of the Spirit, no manifestation of power. Faith not only must come, it must be released. How is faith released? When faith is acted upon, the power of God is activated. You can't have faith in God, just anything you want to believe. This is where folks have made mistakes. Most of us have made some mistakes in this area. Many have tried to separate faith principles from a living fellowship with the Father. It doesn't, it doesn't work to just take a faith principle and I'm going to believe for something. No, you've got to hear from Him in order to believe for him to do what he told you he would do. Well, I'm going to believe that this happens. You're not to just take something off the top of your head and say, I'm going to believe for this. Come on, tell me, how do you get faith? How do you get faith? I mean, it'd be like saying, I'm going to believe that Brother Keith comes over and cuts my grass and does my laundry. Because all things are possible. To them that believes, and I'm a believer, and that's what I'm believing, and I'm claiming. Brother Keith will come and cut my grass and do my laundry. I believe it in my heart. I say it with my mouth. It'll come to pass. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. <laughs> Somebody said faith works. What does that mean? Anybody know what I'm talking about this? There's only one way you could have faith in me that I would do that. Only one way. If I told you. Come on, is that right? You, you might wish it. You might want it. But you can't believe it because there's nothing to believe. You have no basis for your faith. No foundation for your faith. Faith in me to do something would be based on what I told you I would do. Faith in God comes from hearing God. Come on, can you see this? Hearing what he said. They couldn't have faith about that wine situation. 
until they've heard from him. And he's not going to say anything or do anything until he hears from the Father. Is that right? Perfect example. Come come on, are are y'all awake? They didn't just go, okay, we're faith people. Let's take charge of this situation and let's speak to these urns and let's do this. No, you can't have faith. You can't do one thing until you hear from him. So the beginning of every miracle is not to go in to confession mode or praying mode or especially begging mode. The beginning of every miracle is hearing from Him, which is where the praying comes in. There are times you do need to spend some extra time praying and even fasting to hear from Him. Now that's not because it takes that to hear from God. That's because most people live very carnally. Hmm? The closer you are with the Lord, you don't, I mean, Jesus didn't go into praying and fasting. Did he? Because he had already prayed. He's already walking close to the Father. He just heard from him and said, go fill those water pots up. How many know a miracle is already being set in motion? If, if we can get them to act on it. Hmm? What if they wouldn't have acted on it? Faith without works is dead. Dead faith. Is there such a thing as dead faith? The Bible says so. If there's dead faith, there's living faith. Faith that won't act on what it says it believes is dead faith and gets no results. They went out. They filled the water pots with water. Then he said, bear it out to the governor now. Dip it out and take him some. (laughs) Takes faith. Right? Right? They did it. They got all sweaty going back and forth to the well and hauling the buckets and filling up these great, these things were big. They held, they held scores of gallons apiece. They filled these dudes up with H2O. (laughs) Take it out to the governor, give him some. He don't want water. He didn't ask for water, but they do. Somebody said they did what he said. And The ruler of the feast, verse 9, tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was. But when the servants that drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. He said, every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. Do you know what all those guys that that put the water in the pot said? Probably silently. (laughs) Wine? (laughs) They knew there was no wine in there. That water came right out of the well. <laughs> and when men have well drunk, they keep the, the, the worst. But you've kept the good wine till now. This, come on, verse 11. This beginning of miracles. Did Jesus of Cana and Galilee, how did he do it? How did they have a miracle there today, that day? Now, friend, this, this is so wonderful because... This is not a miracle had to happen so somebody didn't starve to death. This is not a miracle had to happen. Somebody's about to die with some dread disease or somebody's about to be killed by some invading army or something. This is just some extra party supplies. (laughs) Which shows what God will do in your life if you learn how to listen to him. Come on, are you... Are you with me? All we got to do is learn how to listen and then act on what he tells us to do. And we can have the power of God manifested in this area of our life, in that area of our life. Areas that are not essential, that are not necessary. And he manifested, somebody say manifested, manifested, manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You holding your place in Acts 14? Okay. Let's go there. Now we've talked about these things in times past. Touched on them more than once. But uh, sometimes we need to hear it again because we didn't get it last time.
Tell me the beginning of a miracle. You hear from him. Now is that the end of it? Does a miracle happen automatically because you hear from him? There's two parts. Right? See, see we saw that in the um, passage in Mark 16. He that believes and will act on it. Right? And then uh, you lay hands on the sick. That's an action, right? right. And they want you, they're participant in it and, and they'll recover. And you see these two parts again and again and again. He told them what to do and they did it. And the miracle happened. He told them something else to do. They did it. And as they were doing it, a miracle was happening in the cup. Is that right? Yeah. Miracle was happening in the container. Amen. They didn't know it. Uh-huh. They couldn't, they didn't do it. How many of the guys dipping the water did not turn the water into wine? That's right? right? That's right. And that's the good news. You don't have to heal yourself. Right. You don't have to solve all your financial problems. That's not your job. Right. All you got to do hear from him. is hear from him and do what he tells you to do. Amen. And there'll be times when you, you won't see. Did they see what filling the water pot with water had to do with them getting more wine for the feast? They didn't see that. It takes faith. Just do what he said. In Acts 14, the Bible said, verse 3, Long time abode they, Acts 14, 3, speaking boldly in the Lord. And he gave testimony to what? He testified to what? Now, not just to them as individuals and preachers. He gave testimony to what they were preaching because what they were preaching was his word. He gave testimony to the word of his grace and granted what? Signs, Signs and wonders. Are these manifestations of power yes. to be done by their hands? What is the Lord working with and confirming? His word. They're preaching what he told them to preach. Mm -hmm. And people are doing what they're preaching. And manifestations of power are occurring as a result. If you skip on down to verse uh, 7, it says there they preached the good news about the good things, the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak. What's he hearing? The The gospel. Is that right? You reckon it's anointed. What comes when you hear the anointed word of God? Faith. And Paul, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, Paul perceiving this man that was crippled, and perceived that he had faith To be healed. That he's about to get faith to be healed? No. He had faith to be healed. And yet he's sitting there crippled. With faith to be healed. (laughs) Why? We see what has happened. How how did he get his faith? He didn't get his faith from praying and begging God for faith. He got his faith from hearing what Paul was preaching. But he's sitting there with faith in God and obviously faith in healing. Paul must have been preaching something about healing in what he called the gospel. Because the man got faith to be healed from hearing the gospel. If nobody ever gets faith to be healed from what people are calling the gospel, it must not be the same gospel Paul preached. I've had people actually try to take me to test. We don't preach all that healing stuff. We just preach the gospel. That's laughable. (laughs) If you preach the same gospel Jesus talked about. Hmm? He said the spirit of the Lord is on me. Hallelujah. For the blind to see. For the captive to be delivered. Is that right? Right. If you preach the same gospel Paul preached. People will get faith. To be saved and healed and delivered. He got faith to be healed from hearing Paul preach what was called the gospel. 
I don't think the gospel has changed. Do you? Men may have left some stuff out and changed it up, but it, it hasn't changed. He perceived that the man had faith to be healed. And yet, there's no healing. If you just stop right here, the man's not healed. There is no manifestation of power. What, what has to happen? Huh? What has to happen? You got dead faith. That says it believes something, but it's all talk. And won't act on what it says it believes. And then you got living faith that acts on what it says it believes and does what the Lord says to do. Amen. That's right. Hmm? That's when you come in contact with the miracle working power of God. He heard Paul speak and he steadfastly beholding him, he perceived that he had faith to be healed. What, what needs to happen? He's, you can't say the man doesn't have faith to be healed. He does have faith to be healed. And yet he's not healed. Friend, is it possible to have faith to be healed and not be healed? It is. What's got to happen? The faith has got to be released, right? And the power activated. The power's here. On another occasion in Luke, it says Jesus was in a place, you know, and he preached the word, and it says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. You remember that? And none of them's getting healed. Until somebody came and they, they tore off the roof and they left that man. Still nobody's getting healed. They just got the roof tore up. <laughs> when did the man get healed? Come on, help me out. When did the man get healed? You know they got some faith or they wouldn't have come to the house and climbed up on top of the house and tore off the roof. Come on, are you listening? And let the man down. They believe something or they would not have gone to this kind of trouble. And yet, he's not healed. He's not healed. Until what happened? Jesus looked at him and said, Rise, take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what happened? Come on, what happened next? What happened? He did it. He got up. Yeah, but he can't. Yeah, but he did. <laughs> yeah, but he can't. Yeah, but he did. <laughs> on another occasion, similar situation. The Bible said there was a man in their midst that had a withered hand. And the scribes and Pharisees were looking to see if Jesus was going to heal him on the Sabbath day. They expected him to get healed. And they don't even believe in him. <laughs> They're punching each other. Watch, watch. Jesus in the room, healed man in the room. I mean, sick man in the room. Somebody's going to get healed today. You watch and see. And yet they were his enemies. Because <laughs> he had such a reputation for healing. And Jesus told the man, among other things, he said, come out here. Come out here. Stand right here in the middle. And he did. He said, now stretch out your hand. For years I thought that meant extend your arm. He didn't say extend your arm. What did he say? Yeah, but he can't. That's the part that's withered. Right? Yet he told him, no. what if the man started crying and said, I can't. I've tried 10,000 times. I can't make that. We wouldn't be reading about it. That's right. Oh, friends, when Jesus said, stretch forth your hand, he made every effort to stretch forth his hand. And this time it was different because when he got to the end of his ability to do it, he met a manifestation of the power of God. Come on, are you listening to me? The power of God met him, but the power was not manifested until he reached the end of what he could do. Which is why many don't have miracles. They say they believe. They're willing to pray. They're willing to beg. But if the Lord says do something. I can't. I can't. And that, that cuts off the power. Cuts off the miracle. This man's got faith. How many believed Paul preached a good message that day? Do you believe it was anointed? Do you believe it really was the gospel? And it was anointed. And he got, this man obviously got faith from hearing him. Mm -hmm. Amen. And yet he's sitting there no better than he's ever been. What's got to happen? Help me out. What's got to happen next? There's got to be acting on 
the faith. And here's where a lot of, some people have gotten this, but then they got messed up. You'll hear tragedy stories about people that threw away their medication and died. Hmm? People that wouldn't get their children treatments that could have saved their life. Huh? Tragedies. And so people on father say, see that, that, that stupid faith stuff. It wasn't faith. Hmm? Because the question is, did the Lord tell him to throw away their medicine? And if they threw it away and died, it's obvious. He didn't tell them to do that. If throwing away your medicine would heal you, it'd be easy. Pitch that bottle over the fence. Is that right? And voila, healing power would manifest. No, that's... But see, people get frustrated and irritated and they want to try to make something happen. So they do some kind of radical thing that God did not tell them to do and call it faith and fall flat on their face. You have to hear from Him. It's not just faith in anything. It's faith in what He said. It's not just acting It's acting on what he said. Are y'all with me, friends? It's not just doing an action, any old action. No, no, it's only doing what he said. So here's this man. And this is not Jesus, it's Paul. Right? Right. And what, what happened next? Come on, read it. Can you get excited about it? He perceived that he had faith to be healed. Mm -hmm. Faith is perceivable. And he said with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. He he saw that man in the crowd. He goes, that guy's ready. Huh? He's ready. He has an impossible situation. He's born with defects in his body. Nothing can be done. And yet, there is something can be done. The power of God can do anything. Come on, do you believe it? The power of God. Get up! This man didn't decide to try to get up on his own. This is a word from the Lord. Is that right? This is a word from the Lord. It's like when he told Peter, come! When he said, if that's you on the water, bid me to come. When the Lord tells you to do something, you can do it. And when he's inviting you, he's inviting you to reach out and meet the power of God. He's inviting you to have a manifestation of the power of God. Do you believe it, saints? It is not some unknowable mystery how to get a miracle. It is not some undiscoverable thing how to have more manifestations of the power of God. It is as simple as hear from him and do it. Is that right? Hear from him and do it. And you will meet the power of God. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Stand up on your feet and praise him and give him thanks, saints. 